Hi, thanks for watching. This video will be looking at basic form validation within Flutter. So I have some pictures inside of the article, which you can see at developer.school of the final version of this video. And essentially what we are creating is a form with a field. When we type in the field, the form is gonna react based on the state of the form. For example, we can't have an empty name and that's gonna show within that text field. If the name is only one character, it will also show that to the user. And depending on whether the form is valid or not, we're also gonna show this sort of snack bar here at the bottom of the page. That's triggered whenever the user tries to submit the form. And we're simply just showing that for demo purposes right now. We can see that the form is valid here on this validation spot because there's no error message. We have a blue sort of underline and we have this is valid. So like I said, you can see this over at developer.school. You can see that we have the code and everything else you may wanna see for this video right here on screen, if we can actually show that. So here it is, basic form validation with Flutter. Let's jump in, let's create our new Flutter project using Flutter Create. We wanna call this Flutter Forms and then we'll CD into that directory. We'll then open this up inside VS Code and of course, open that within the emulator. Now that we have our application up and running, we can see that we have a material app that has a theme with some theme data and a home of account page. If we look at account page, it simply is a stateless widget that has the child of an account form. And the account form is this form with the child of column. So we are wrapping our column inside of this form widget. And that allows us to, of course, add these text form fields which we'll add in a moment. Before that, what we want to do is create a uniquely identifiable key for our account form. So inside of our account form state, let's add a final form key and set that equal to a global key of form state. We can then go ahead and assign that key to the form key that we just created inside of that form. Now we can go ahead and add one or multiple text form fields to our column. Let's add a children. And inside of that, we can have a text form field. And when we hit save, we can now see that we have this field. We can make this a little more interesting if we add a decoration. And the decoration has an input decoration. We could give this, for example, the hint text of name. Now you can see that we have this name hint when we type inside of that, the name does disappear. We could change that if we wanted to, to be a label text. And when we change that to a label text, the name still appears within the form field. That's entirely up to you. We can also add some helper text. The helper text, for example, could be something like, this has to be over two characters in length. We can now see that just underneath that text form field. We can now go ahead and add a validator to our form field. So let's add the validator property. That gives us back the value. And then within here, we can assign some rules. For example, if the value dot is empty, we can return something like, you can't have an empty name. So if we do that, and of course, now we remove the name, we still don't see anything. And that's fine because we're gonna change the way that we validate the form in a moment. Next up, I also wanna check if the value dot length is less than two. If it is, we can return name must have more than one character. Now, of course, these are just arbitrary rules. You can simply add whatever you want for your application. Next, we can then go ahead and add a raised button. We'll do that by adding it underneath the text form field. We'll add the argument of on pressed. And when this has been pressed, we can go ahead over to our form key and say dot current state dot validate. And that's gonna go ahead and validate that form. So we have these validators right here. When we select the validator method, we should then be able to do something like show a snack bar. So depending on whether this is valid or not, we can get the scaffold of the context so the current scaffold, and then we can show a snack bar with a snack bar inside of that. And the content of a text saying this is valid. If it isn't valid, we'll do the same thing, but this time we'll show the text of this is not valid. So this is not valid. We'll also give this the child 
of text submit. And now at this stage, when we click that button, we should hopefully see this is not valid. But if we add a name such as ABC or QWA and hit submit once more, we can now see it's valid. And each time we delete this and hit submit, you can see we get a different error message. So if we just put one character and hit submit, it wouldn't be valid. And also at the same time, it would say name must have more than one character. What if we wanted to access the value of that name? Well, let's go ahead and add a string for the name. And now on our text form field, we can go ahead and add an unsaved. We can get the value that we get back. And then we can say set state. We want to set the state of our name equal to that value. Underneath the button, we can go ahead and put the text equal to that name just to see the name on screen. We'll set the initial value of the name equal to an empty string. And now when we select the name and we type in hello and then hit submit, we should be able to see our name. But interestingly enough, we can't. And that's because we have validated the form, but we haven't actually saved the form. So how do we do that? Well, we can hit form key dot current state dot save. And when we hit save and then submit, we can now see the name that we selected. So this allows you to save values whenever, for example, we hit submit. And this may be a pattern that you want to use. Alternatively, you can also access something called unchanged. So let's have a look at unchanged. All we need to do there is just change the value of unsaved to unchanged. And now anytime we update the value of our form field, it will of course instantly update that value underneath the submit button. That's because that name is getting updated any time the form field has changed. But you will notice that at the same time, the error message is no longer updating depending on whether the form is valid. And that's because we haven't set auto validate equal to true. So let's hit auto validate equal to true, save the file. And now at this stage, if we start typing in the box, we can see it goes through the different error messages. For example, a name must have more than one character. If we delete this, you can't have an empty name. And finally, if we do add a name inside of here, we can see all of those errors disappear. So here's a few basic ways in which you can start to validate your forms within Flutter. I hope you found it useful. If you have, let me know inside of the comments section below. Hit that subscribe button to stay updated with more Flutter videos. And of course, I'd like to see you in the comments. Bye.